won the right to rest peacefully in Texas water. Howdy and hello, I'm Travis Davis, Vice President of Ship Operations, Battleship Texas Foundation. I'm Ryan Samansky, Curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. The purpose of the mushroom. Uh-huh. It's a gas check, so it's to keep the expanding gases from the bag charge from coming out of the breach. So this just seals up against the bre breach housing and keeps the gas from coming out. So kind of like, with this gun here, it just goes right there. Yep, yeah, please, please, uh, the, all the grease, the, the, the goopiness of this, this breach assembly is just paint on grease. We, we put grease over the, the teeth or, or the, the threads to protect them from the paint when we painted this thing. So the, the other type of, of uh, breach block that you, know, you mentioned is the vertical sliding breach block. Uh, so this is a breach block from a, a three inch 50. So you have these nice mortises here that the block slides up and down and keeps the block aligned. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then you have the breach face because a three inch 50 is a, a, a fix, fix round mm -hmm. and uses a cartridge. Uh, there's the firing pin right here. And this actually, mount actually, this is a fully assembled breech block and it actually has its firing pin in it. So um, this thing weighs about a hundred pounds. Okay, so with the five inch guns, the thread is what keeps that from blowing open when there's an explosion inside here. It's these engaged with. Precisely right. Hey, it's like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm faking it really well. Um, so, you know, you saw the corrosion on the, on the mushroom of the five inch. You can see the same thing here. Uh, this, this channel here is for the ejectors, which actually hold the block down when the, um, when the gun's in battery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you put a, when you put a, a round in, it shoves in, trips the ejectors, and then the, the block springs up. Uh, so was this gun living the last hundred years with the breech block down or with the breech block up that's caused this corrosion? Oh. The breech block was up in the closed position. Yeah, so tell me what you've done to help prevent that going forward. Excellent question. So what we've done, so historically, you know, when these guns were in operation, uh, you would have bare steel with, uh, with, a, with a light oil on them to keep them you know, moving, and then there's no surface corrosion. And if there was any surface corrosion, the, crew, the gun crew would then um, sand it off using like a very fine sandpaper, right? Okay. And then, then re-oil it again just to prevent you know, further corrosion. Um, what we're doing, since we're, we don't have dedicated gun crews for every single mount on the ship, uh, what we do, we're doing is, is nickel plating them. So what the nickeling does is it puts on a non-corrosive layer right on top of, of the steel, protects it. Of course, we're gonna put lubricant over the top of it, so light oil as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, when the guns are back on the ship, we'll have a, a bag over the, uh, the breach end of the gun to keep it from, again, more from water from accumulating. Then again, I had like with the five inch guns, we're more just routine maintenance. So instead of getting service every day, that's gonna be, you know, once a quarter or something like that. So we have a smaller team that are covering more guns, but it's certainly getting more attention that they, than they've gotten in the past. So just like the five inch guns, the intention is to make it all workable and, and keep it that way. Exactly. Some of these guns we're actually going to be able to blank fire. So we're going to build sub munitions and then blank fire, just like you, do, you guys yeah. do with your 40s. Uh, we're, we're going to do the same thing. So outstanding. Yeah, and we're, we'll do that with our three-inch 50s, but we're not with the five-inch because those that, are such old artifacts in the ship. Well, that they're they're, they're uh, you know I, I consider them the second most historic objects on the on the ship. Our guns on the ship outside of the 14-inch guns, but the um, just the inherent danger of, of working with bag charges and bag rounds. So uh, you, you gotta worry about gas clearing and to try to use um, a, um, a kind of a, a propane like setup, like, you know, you, a propane popper on like a 20 millimeter, like, like mm -hmm. some other ships have done, mm -hmm. which, is, which is great. I mean, it's a great effect. Uh, the volume that we're talking about here and <laughs> what you would have to do with the object, the, the, which you would have to do the object to, to modify to make that work. It's not worth it. So, yeah. um, so more than likely, these are going to be more more static. And if we do do anything, it'll be you know a power technic set into the end, like we did in 2014 for the ship Centennial. We set power technics in the end of the muzzle of the 14-inch gun to simulate them firing. So, so is the decision? Obviously, there's, there's a safety concern with the older guns. Is the decision more that 
uh, that is an original artifact of the ship. Those, those original five inch guns, as opposed to the three inch guns are new ones that the Navy gave you to replace the originals. Or uh, it, how much is that a part of the? It, it's actually a big, big factor in, in the calculus. Um, I mean, obviously practicality is, is one thing, but preserving what's there, that's, that's pretty big. Now, if these were, you know, like your five, five inch 38s where you have you know, a, a fixed round or mm -hmm. at least a, 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 your powders in a casing, that's a different story. We might do that, but to modify an original ar ar artifact to do something that's not originally intended to yeah. do, we're not going to do that. So, um, and then unlike you guys, we also have a bunch of regulatory hoops that we have to jump through because the ship and its objects are owned by the state of Texas. So not only, you know, we're operating the ship and restoring the ship on behalf of the state of Texas, but that uh, means that we have to work really hand in hand with um, our partners at Texas Parks and Wildlife Department and their cultural resources department. So we have to kind of get a, their blessing on certain things. And then we also have to um, have the state uh, historic preservation office sign off on a lot of our projects. So to remove these guns, we actually had to have a permit from uh, the Texas Historical Commission um, to remove these guns. Even the shipyard project that we're doing right now, it all had to have a permit, so. And that's an interesting difference between Texas and New Jersey. New Jersey is owned by the museum, not by the state. Uh, that said, our contract does still require us if we're gonna make a major alteration mm -hmm. to contact our state historic preservation right. officer as well. Well, and that's- it's just good practice. Uh, yeah, even if you're eligible for a uh, historic pro property, you still have to go through that process right. because it has to go through, be reviewed by the uh, ACHP uh, per section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, so. Yeah. Preservation law. So are the major preservation projects obviously removing the guns, but now the work that you're doing, like nickel plating a piece that wasn't originally, is that something that they sign off on as well? They didn't, but I, we kind of view, uh, this is reversible without damaging the object. So you can just sandblast it off. We, we sandblast it off or chemically remove it. So mm -hmm. without damaging the, the original object. Um, so anywhere where there's a tolerance issue, so like, uh, where you would think that there would be a tolerance issue here with these the mortises between this and the breech housing. There's actually not with, mm -hmm. with the nickel plating, but in other instances there are. So those things we don't plate, the only areas that are exposed to the elements is what we plate. So uh, other ships are doing this as well uh, and, and really kind of put the bug in my ear was Rich McKelvey at Pampanito, mm -hmm. what they're doing with the, what they did with their five inch third, uh, not five inch 38, they're five inch 25. Five inch 25, yeah. Okay. And, they're, and they're 40 mounts, so which they completely uh, Frankenstein, the amazing restoration job that they did on those. I mean, I don't think that was restoration, that was resurrection is what that, that was. So, um, but they did a lot of nickel plating and for them that was a little bit more accurate because those, it specified that those mounts were, were plated, but, uh, or parts of those mounts were plated, but, so like, on our 20s, we didn't nickel plate, but we parkerize. So, so areas that would might accumulate water, we parkerize it, and then we then put another layer of light primer over the top of that. So we're trying okay. to pr inject as much life back into these these pieces as possible. Um, and again, with that whole mantra of first do no harm. So, um, and like I said, this is reversible without damaging the object. Um, and that's the underlying principle of everything that we do is, you know, um, it, particularly with the ob the objects that we're working on is we're not going to do anything that's not reversible so um outside of you know getting rid of the rust but you yeah. know throw it outside for 50 years and then we have corrosion bang <laughs> and, and let's just get a close-up of this breach so we can see the corrosion from this thing being left in place for however many years look at how pitted that is and it's still functioning now that they've nickel plated it and done this restoration process. It's going to get cleaned up a little bit more. We're doing our final functioning tests on this and then it'll go through final touch up and reassembly and get closed up and go outside and wait to go on the show. Thank you for watching the video um, and thank you to our great, great friends from Battleship New Jersey for coming down. Um, if you haven't already, please go over to their channel and like and subscribe and watch their stuff. Uh, the more you watch them, the more they can come see us and create this great content. Um, and as always, thank you for watching our, our channel and supporting us that way. If you're following us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And uh, as always, 
Come on, Texas.